Hello everyone. I'll be talking about the computer generation of the measures of central tendency and the measures of variation. So in my previous videos, I presented the manual computation of the measures of central tendency and the measures of variation. So for this video, I'll be presenting Megastat. Megastat is actually a free software. You can download it one from the internet. So open uh, Google or any search engine, then search Megastat. The spelling M-E-G-A, then stat, the S-T-A-T, mega stat. The one word only. Search that one. And then once you have searched, you can download that one freely. That's a free software. But once you have downloaded that software, try to check because there are websites in which you have successfully downloaded the software, but it will not function effectively or efficiently. So situate that your downloaded Megastat is functional. So check that one all the time. So some of my students uh, in the previous semesters uh, told me that they have downloaded, but when they tried to use the software, it uh, did not uh, function. So check that one. Once you have downloaded the software, you have to check its functionality. And then if it does not function, then uh, you are going to uninstall that one and then find another website, then download that one. So you have to have trial and error so that you are able to download that one correctly in such a way that it is a functional Megastat software. So for example, you've got uh, this data, student scores uh, in a 100 item score exam. So we have here students uh, column, one up to 27. We have scores of section uh, section A student. Uh, sorry, the section A student. Uh, so we have 89, so forth and so on, up to 86. So section A is composed only of uh, 25. And then we have scores of section B students. Uh, from 77 up to 97. So if you look at the data, the total number of students for section B is 27. And then section C, we have 87, 87, so forth and so on, up to 98. So if you look at the total number of data, 98 only for section uh, C as the highest one, and the total number of students for that class is only 24. So that's very normal. From one section to another section, the total number of students would vary. And in some cases, the total number of students from one section to another section would be exactly the same. But uh, very common is on an equal number of students per class as you go from one section to another section. So if you're going to compute the measures of central tendency, mean, median, and then mode, so with the measures of variation, no, standard deviation, and the variance of the data, then situate that the data are encoded in a Microsoft Excel. So we have uh, here the Microsoft Excel encoded uh, data. And once uh, you run the Megastat, uh, then you would actually see the output. Uh, if you look at the output, the label is all about descriptive statistics. And you can find there in the first column count. So we have mean, minimum, maximum, range, population variance, population standard deviation. First quartile, quartile number one, then the median or quartile number two. Then we have the third quartile or quartile number three. And we have the interquartile range. I mentioned about that term in the video about measures of variation. Then you can find also the low extremes, uh, talking about outliers. Then we have low outliers, we have high outliers. Remember in those videos about measures of central tendency and measures of variation, I mentioned about outliers. So in here, the outliers are detected by the software directly. And we have high extremes. And in the video about uh, measures of variation and even in the quartile video, I mentioned about uh, 
box plot. And in some books, uh, we classify this one as box uh, whisker plot. So automatic the box and whisker plot are actually being uh, constructed by Megastat. And the next column is all about the scores of section A uh, students. So, so we have 25 uh, count, meaning there are 25 uh, data in there. Then we have mean is 84.24. And then uh, we have high extreme uh, is being provided. And then section uh, B. So the minimum is being calculated directly, maximum, the range, the population variance, population standard deviation, so forth and so on up to high extremes. And that's the same to section C. We look up into the descriptive statistics and the measures of variation. So these are actually automatically generated by Megastat. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that in a Megastat? So let me stop sharing first. Okay. And then just for a moment. And then I'll share again another screen. Just hold it for a moment. For a moment. Wait to locate first. I'm going to locate first my file. Okay, so I hope you are seeing my screen. This is actually the screen in a Microsoft Excel file. So I have the Microsoft Excel file. And then you can actually see in here data. And then the other one is on output. So you can see at the very bottom of a Microsoft Excel file, we have output and we have a data. So take note that uh, you can actually rename this one or you can type something in here, put the cursor into this cell and then type the file name. So I label this one as uh, data. And this one output, uh, once you use Megastat automatic, uh, the sheet is being labeled as output. So here it is. So once I look up into my Excel file of the student scores in a 100 item science exam. So in a Microsoft Excel, you're going to locate, you're going to locate, hold on for the moment, I'm going to transfer this one. Okay. So locate on data. So I'm placing the cursor on the data item. So when I click on data towards the upper right hand corner you can find megastat so megastat does not function if you're not opening microsoft excel so megastat does not function if you are not opening your microsoft excel so how to locate megastat you are going to look at into data click on data then to the upper right hand corner you can find megastat but this one is depending on the gadget that you are using I'm using Mac, so I'm seeing Megastat on the upper right-hand corner. So check uh, your gadget. But you could not see Megastat when you open the data if you have not downloaded it one. So see to it now you have downloaded Megastat and you are going to have that one in your desktop. 
And then be sure that you are opening Microsoft Excel because Megastat does not function if you are not opening Microsoft Excel. So when I click into Megastat, so what appears on your screen would be the features of Megastat. So you can find in here descriptive statistics, frequency distribution, probability, then confidence interval down to random number generation, and then other utilities, and then the help icon or the information icon. So in here, I'm going to click on descriptive statistics. Take note that uh, in those videos uh, that I let you watch, I mentioned about descriptive statistics. And uh, this includes uh, measures of variation and then measures of central tendency. So I'm going to click uh, descriptive statistics. So once you click on descriptive statistics, you can see this dialog box. The cursor is blinking. So the cursor is blinking there. So once the course is blinking on the first rectangular box, which is labeled as input, put the cursor to the data that you have here. So put the cursor starting with the column heading. Always include the, the column heading. And then uh, drag that one going down. So we have here. So up to the last row where the data are actually encoded. And then you are going to check what do you want to see in the computer generation. So check on mean. And then you have to uncheck sample, variance and sample standard deviation. Why? Because the data that we have are actually concerning all students of section A, all students of section B, then all students of section C. So we are actually looking into the members of the entire population. I mentioned in the videos that I let you watch that sample is just representative of the total population, meaning not all members of the class are included in the data collection. So what I will check would be population variance and population standard deviation. And then check on minimum, maximum, and then the range. Uh, minimum, the lowest value, maximum, the highest value. Then median, then quartiles, mode, and then outliers. Then box plot. The other term of box plot is box and whisker plot. And in the videos that I let you watch, the term used there is box and whisker plot. But in here in Megastat, the term is box plot. And then we have one main we have minimum, maximum range, median, quartiles, mode, outliers, then box plot. And then after that, you are going to click on OK. So once you click on OK, then you will see the output. So the output is here presented. So we have the output. The same to the first uh, document that I let you see no, on this video. So you can find uh, first column from count up to high extremes. Then we have here for the students and for the scores of section B and then the scores of section C with the measures of central tendency and the measures of variation. And then automatic, we have a generation of the box plot for section A, box plot for section B and the box plot for section C. So for now, because of uh, the technology that we have, uh, then uh, it would be easier for us uh, to calculate those different measures of central tendency and those different measures of uh, variation. But of course, we have to pass by the manual computation I let you compute manually, mean, median mode, sample standard deviation, sample variance, and all other manual computations. Why? Because if you are not able to experience the manual computation, you would never appreciate the, the technology. So I want you to download Megastat and then explore, follow the video. And if you're not able to follow the video, see me in the office for consultation so that you will be able to have an expertise on how to operate the Megastat. 
So thank you very much.